Hey everyone, nice to see y'all back and tuning in to all of this MacBook Air content. As promised, I got you all. I know a lot of you guys will be buying a new MacBook Air this fall and winter. And so if you're wondering, yes, you've made it to the right place. For today's video, we'll be taking a more in-depth look at raw benchmarks and some real-world performance tests so that you guys can see the difference between the mighty M1 and the all-new and supposed even beefier M2 head-to-head. Is the performance increase worthy of upgrading from the M1? After this video, I'll answer that question and stay tuned as I also plan to do one of my infamous battery drain tests comparing these two MacBook Airs. So as always, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on any of the action. And one last thing, I know choosing the right MacBook for you is really hard, especially since everyone has different use cases for their computers. So to help you guys out, I am opening up my social media DMs in case you have a specific use case and may need some pointers on what model or configuration is right for you. Stay tuned until the end of the video for my social media handles. All right, I think we're good on the intros and announcements, so let's not waste any time and get right into some testing. All right, all right, guys. So firstly, it is important to go over the specs so we can know what we're working with. Both of these models are baseline models, and I know there was some drama about the SSDs on the M2 baseline and how many big tech reviewers recommend you not go out and get the baseline model. I'll discuss that controversy later on in the video, but yeah, $200 sets both of these bad boys apart with the M1 Air still available directly through Apple and starts at $999, while the all new redesigned M2 Air got hit with inflation as it now starts at a whole $1199. So it's a fair question to wonder whether the extra $200 is worth it. Well, let's look at some raw benchmarks to see whether it makes sense on a performance level. Okay, so first we start with the classic and very reliable Geekbench test to not only test out single core and multi-core performance, but also an OpenCL test and a metal test to see whether one has an edge more so in the graphics department or not. So running a single and multi-core test, as you can see, the M2 fares better and by a decent margin with the single core of the M1 coming in at 1751 versus 1925 on the M2. Over on multi-core, the M1 scored 7580 versus 8862 on the M2. So as you can see, the differences are okay, but are they worth $200? Don't worry, we got several more tests coming up. Okay, so staying on Geekbench, but now running an OpenCL and Metal test. These two tests differ slightly in that it's a better gauge at the graphical performance of each machine. The higher the score, the faster render speeds you can expect and better fluidity while gaming. So running both tests on the OpenCL side, we can see some substantial gains with about a 6,000 point difference. And likewise on our Metal test, with the M1 scoring a hair over 19,000, while the M2 Air scores in the high 25,000s. This implies some decent gains based off of Geekbench alone, but we still need to do more testing. Next up, we crank up Cinebench, an intensive test that maxes out our chipset and cores to give us feedback as to what can be expected, especially when cranking up that intensity. Now mind you, both of these MacBooks have a fanless design, which means some thermal throttling will hinder performance. If they did have a fan, it would most likely handle that a little better, so keep that in mind. Once again, we see similar performance gains when compared to the base M1 versus the base M2, as we can see about a 100 point increase for single core on the M2 and a little over a 1000 point increase for multi-core. This implies that working on multi-layered applications like Final Cut or Photoshop should be a little more fluid with less render times and more snappiness. All right, so while on the topic of gaming and graphics, let's head over to the GFX Metal Test, which runs a series of simulations and then takes the frame per second to give us a better idea at how much lag or dropped frames we can expect from the different virtual environments. So we ran the Aztec Ruin Test, Car Chase, Manhattan 3.1, and T-Rex Test at the same time to try and see if there are any big improvements when looking at this specific test. And as you can see across the board, they both did pretty fine, and in some instances, the M2 only barely bested the M1. Interesting results so far to say the least. So raw benchmarks are nice and all, but it's time to look at some real world usage kind of testing, and I did want to brush up on the controversy surrounding the base M2 MacBook Air. So look, the thing is, the base model M2 starts at 256GB of storage. 
I'll be the first to say a $1,200 computer should not have 256 gigs of storage. At least give us 512 gigs to start Apple. Some smartphones have bigger starting stores than the base M2 Air, and that's a phone, not a computer. So not only that, but we have a double whammy case here as the starting 256 gigabyte model uses a single SSD chip instead of two in parallel, like a majority of Apple's other MacBooks with higher storage configurations. I think this is pretty dirty on Apple's part, man. The nickel and diming here is insane. So transfer speeds, especially hear me out guys who are photographers or videographers, you will have considerably slower SSDs on the base M2, and that's because that single chip has to do the work of two chips, and therefore, it slows down the transfer speeds. It's a big shame, and the upgrade to the 512 gig variant will set you back an additional $200 for the speedier SSDs. I mean, that's already close to $1,500 when you factor in taxes. So it's a terrible predicament for those excited to upgrade, but it's also wise to be aware of just exactly what you're getting when dropping so much cash on a new computer. So taking a look at Blackmagic's disk speed test and the results on the base M2 Air are quite saddening, as its read and write speeds consistently benchmark lower than its predecessor. In some cases, by more than 500 megs a second. It's pretty insane. So again, buyers beware that SSD performance is greatly diminished on the base M2 Air as Apple decided to cheap out on us. So consider upgrading to a higher storage tier if transfer and read and write speeds are important to your workflow. All right, speaking of workflow, two applications I use almost daily are Final Cut and Photoshop or Lightroom. So I created two tests to gauge at real world performance. This is where I personally will be able to see if the $200 difference is worth the upgrade. Now I do a lot of video editing and occasional photo editing. So at least for me, faster render speeds and exports are crucial to me, especially when having a demanding schedule of content creating. So I exported the same project to both MacBook Airs and ran the exact same compressor settings for export. The project was about 9 minutes long, which is pretty typical for me, so we start the clock and they're off to the races. To my surprise, I stepped aside to heat up some chicken wings, and when I came to check back in, it seemed that they were neck and neck till the end, with the M2 technically finishing about a half second faster than the M1 Air. So at least for video exports, they're about the same. However, I did notice slightly faster render speeds for some of the scenes in the project, but it was only marginally faster. Hmm, interesting results. What about some photo exports? Good question. Let's head over to Adobe Lightroom and copy the same light edits to 151 photographs and then export them and record the time of each. So we use the good old Command plus C to copy, then Command A and Command V to paste the same settings to all and then exporting them. And at least in the photography department, it seems the M2 Air did do slightly better exporting all 151 photos because it did it in 40 seconds, while the M1 Air lagged slightly behind exporting them 5 seconds slow with an overall time of 45 seconds. Now this was only 151 photos and some of my fellow photographers know that in some sessions you can easily do more than 1000. So knowing this information is crucial for those who do larger exports. All right, almost wrapping up here with this cool test called Speedometer 2.0, which basically tests the snappiness of web-based applications and tests for general web browsing. It then spits out a score and the higher here, the better. With higher scores, this will imply that a computer will run more smoothly over longer time periods, especially especially when having multiple tabs open, which can consume a lot of system memory and could hinder performance and snappiness while web browsing. So here, the M2 fares better as it scores 341 and a half, while the M1 Air scores 300 flat. Honestly though, both MacBooks run extremely smooth even when opening 9 to 10 Chrome tabs while also having Lightroom open and doing some light edit work. I mean, both are snappy and not once did it ever lag or show any signs of slowness as both models chipset provides more than ample firepower to handle most multitasking. Apple has done a great job in its RAM department as it's so well optimized. Unless you plan to open more than 30 tabs while doing a lot of multitasking, which is unlikely, you should be fine with the base baseline RAM configurations. And finally, to round us out, we'll take a look at the Unigen Heaven test that helps us get a better understanding, mainly on gaming potential. Heaven runs a bunch of scenes and captures the average frame per second of the entire test and spits out a general score as well. 
For the M1 Air, the difference here was substantial. I was actually surprised. The M1 scored a general score of 1609 versus 2079 for the M2 Air and held an average frame per second of 63.9 for the M1 and a more improved 82.5 for the M2, indicating that gaming will probably run a little smoother for you on the M2 equipped Airs. So guys, I hope you all learned something with the varying tests we went through. All in all, I think the M2 Air is a worthy upgrade if and only if you go in fully aware that the 256GB option comes with a much slower SSD and you can expect 10 to 15-ish percent roughly performance gains across the board. It's nothing out of this world, but they're decent performance improvements and for those individuals with demanding workflows, the added power the M2 gives could make the difference for them. Plus, the redesign is really sexy and that midnight color, man, it is to die for. So there you have it guys, I wanted you all to see how the power of each machine compared head to head. As always, drop a like as these videos are time consuming as many of the tests must be in a controlled setting with plenty of care and attention being placed on fairness and integrity of the tests. So guys, that's it for now. As promised, here are my social media handles. My DMs are open for any of you guys who are finding it tough to decide which MacBook is the right one for you. Just give me some time if I take a while to reply. I also just started my second to last semester at college to attain my minor degree in statistics, so definitely wish me luck there. The Apple event is right around the corner as well, so lots to stay busy with. Battery drain tests between the M1 and M2 will soon be in the works as well, so stay tuned for that, and as always guys, I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.